Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. It all starts with you as the parent reading, researching, because you can find a lot of things in a book and you can find lots of things on the internet. So please do your due, your due diligence and just open a book and read. But what books, right? There's lots of books out there. That's the point of this and the many videos that I'm going to create. And this video is not only for non um, black parents, it's for all parents. If you're interested in bringing resources, general resources into your homeschool, your learning lab, if you have kids who are in school full time, these are just ways or resources that you can use to just bring in some extra umph <laughs> into their learning. Because learning about everyone and how all types of people um, have impacted the world, how they have impacted the U.S. just makes history richer, just makes our lives richer, just allows us to open our eyes and remove the scales from our eyes so we can see people for who they are, so that we can see people's ancestors for who they are and what they brought to the table and just be candid and truthful and honest in those conversations, even if those conversations may be a bit uncomfortable for you to have with your kiddos or a bit uncomfortable for you as the parent, as the adult to realize and put biases and put um, other things aside to just bring truth to light and just to give your child a feast of information, a plate full of information. Um, I just think it makes learning better it makes the world better and it just makes your student and yourself just more well-rounded when dealing with the things of the world okay enough on that let's dive into it you have kids that are engineers kids that are future stem players um when i say stem players i mean like future students who are interested in the field of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So if you have kids that are into that, or if they're not into that, and you just want to learn about inventions that non-Europeans have done, this is a great way to start. Um, this book, I love it because it's actually written as a story, as a novel, and well, not a novel, but as a story. And as the story goes on, with these two um, kids, it talks about the various inventions that were created by um, African Americans. So the first part was a little bit of the story, the first chapter of the story. Then it talks about some of the people or ideas or inventions that was discussed in that first chapter. And then it goes on to the second chapter of the story and then after that second chapter it dives into um, the people who created those inventions that were mentioned both men and women within that chapter so this book is excellent I think this is a great book for elementary and it's a great book for middle school and it's a great book for high school if you want to just skip the um, chapter and go straight into the brief biographies of the individual inventors. But again, I think this book here is super great for like second grade, third grade, even first grade. I'm gonna say elementary first, all the way through like the seventh grade. And then once you get to like seventh or above, they may not be interested in reading the story part because, you know, it's a simple story, but the concept is wonderful and they can still learn about the people. So this is wonderful. For those, again, who are interested in STEM and in um, engineering or inventions, this is a great book as well. This book is not read in a story format. It is read in the format of talking to you about what that person did, who they are, where they were born, what they created, and why it was created at that particular time. So it talks about your inventors first, and then it dives into your um, scientist. Let me show you a quick chapter of the first person. So these stories are not long at all. I think this is great for your fourth grader, fifth grader, and your definite middle schooler. This can also be used for a high schooler. And also another idea, when you are reading about these individual people, you can also ask your student to um, 
invent something of their own that it's similar or that can help with the invention that was currently created or the invention that they're reading about that was created. So it's a great way to bring in something hands-on and to incorporate STEM into your homeschooling journey. And you as the parent, I'm going to say again, when I read history or when I teach anything related to history, any type of history, world history, U.S. history, whatever type of history, I like to read first and then I like to create many lessons or many unit studies or um jot down some vocabulary words. Um, I may do some sentence dictation, some copy work of quotes or um, things I don't want them to forget. Um, and we just have a conversation and we just have fun with it. So nothing boring, just read, tell me about it or read, write an essay or read, answer these questions. Dialogue, and then again, I've said this in a previous video, when you discuss history, if you do it in such a way and create a space, an environment that makes it fun, and even if the stories are not fun, even what they're learning about is not fun, it's horrendous, it's horrible. If you have those conversations around the dinner table, they won't forget it. If you have those conversations in the form of questions and answers by having big, juicy, wonderful conversations, they won't forget about it. If you do it in the form of having something done that's interactive, like um, depending on what time period, let's say, I don't know, you can recreate something, a scene or something like that, or you can have them do a um, virtual, not virtual, but a um, visual storyboard explaining the events. You can do something creative. You can watercolor a scene. You can build. It's just a wonderful way of teaching history, I found. I love it. But So that was the first one. So it's not that many. It's not, it's not that long. You know, about 15, 16 pages for some of the folks you're learning about. But again, Black Pioneers, Science, Inventions and inventions. Great way to bring in STEM. In a prior video, I showed you these two books. These two books are really quick. It talks about um, important people to know within the Hispanic and African American cultures or communities. And it just gives you a one pager brief bio on that person. But again, you can use this as a springboard to talk about current events, a springboard to talk about historical events based on where you are in your timeline of history, may it be world history, or U.S. history, or you can do a person study, character analysis, compare and contrast, choose someone from this book, choose someone from this book and do a compare and contrast in how they help their communities and how they may have unintentionally helped another community or an event that happened um, in a different time frame or around the world. So just great ways of bringing that in. This book here, I think they have one for Hispanics as well. I think they have 1001 things everyone should know about um, Hispanic American history. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I really think they do. I don't have that one, but um, definitely one to pick up. But this one here, a great way to start. Definitely you can read this aloud. Um, you can... Um, have conversation with your students. You can use this as a springboard. It breaks it out into um, six parts. So you can, you know, say, hey, let's talk about great mi migration, civil rights and politics, African Americans in the military, culture and religion, inventions and science, medicine and sports and play Jeopardy. Give each one a certain number. And let's say we ranged it from 100 being migration to 600 being sports. You play Jeopardy and your child would say 600 um, sports for 600, please. So you would go to the sports section, which starts on page 351. Just giving you ideas of what we do during game night, um, family um, game night. If you don't want to play an actual board game, we're um, bringing in this type of stuff, then they would say sports for 600, please. And then I would say, okay, the categories would be boxing or keep on going. boxing would be one category, baseball would be another category.
basketball would be another category, football would be one, tennis would be one, and depending on which one they chose, I would read. So I would go ahead and I would read it aloud for them, and then after I'm done reading it, I would ask them a question based on what we read, and then they would earn the points based on what we read. So for example, let me read this one. First American, African Americans to play in the NBA. In 1951, the Boston Celtics signed Chuck Cooper, and then blah, 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 blah. I would read all that, right? And then I would say um, something like, um, who was the first African American to play in the NBA? And they would have to tell me, Chuck Cooper. Or I would say, what year did the first African American play in the NBA? And they would say, 1951. So that helps with reading comprehension. It helps with, you know, memorization skills and things of that nature. So that's how we like to use this book. Um, again, we just don't sit here and read. I like to make it fun. Okay. Another good read that could be utilized for you as the parent. I would say you as parent, read this first. This book is excellent. A black history reader questions that you never thought to ask. Read these, read this book. I think a high schooler could read this book on their own, but I just think it brings it to life if you as the parent read it first, and then you bring these nuggets of truth and information into your conversations, depending on where it fits most appropriate with your kiddos, okay? So let me see here. And you can also definitely use this book as a way to, um, talk about current events you can use this book to have conversation and dialogue about the african-american experience here in the u.s to better understand what's happening and why okay so here is the table of contents and you may not like or agree with everything this book says and that's okay. It's just one, it's information for you to have so you can understand it from our perspective, from the perspective of a non-European, from a perspective of a black person, a black American, an African American, however um, each person decides to label themselves, okay? So again, I would not give this book to your student and say, hey, read. Let's learn about diversity. Let's learn about black people. No, no, don't ever do it like that. Okay, but let me choose one here. Um, I'm going to just choose this one. Very controversial. Number 10. What is racism and can a black person be racist? Let's look at page 31. And again, as you as the parent, you read, you highlight, you notate, you can um, cross-reference through other research so that when you have conversation with your students around the dinner table or a particular subject or something comes up, you have a framework to pull from. So that talks about what is racism. Racism is a group-based, I'm sorry, racism is a group-based power and economic control phenomenon in which one group owns and controls so much wealth and resource power that it can enslave, subordinate, exploit, exclude, or render another group non-existent. The dominant racial group can make life and death decisions for potential competitor groups. It can predetermine what the lesser group can own, control its wealth, and the extent to which it will be allowed to compete. So after you read some of this information, it gives you some background information. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was a benefit um, to you. Um, keep the questions coming, guys. I love them. Keep the questions coming. I'll keep the videos um, going. I have lots of things to show you. As always, be blessed and make it a great day. Bye.